Hello everyone and welcome to video number 29 in our survival game series done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and in this video we're gonna be taking a look at applying fall damage to our player. So whenever our, fall, uh, our player falls from a certain height, it will apply damage to the player stat script depending on how high. Uh, okay, cool. So we're gonna be needing a, the, the script we applied in tutorial number 20, this one, uh, called the FPS Walker Enhanced, which is something I got from the internet and then uh, made some improvements and changes to, uh, to allow for stuff like crouching. Uh, so if you don't have this applied, please go ahead and watch tutorial number 20 to learn more about that. And uh, of course, uh, this new updated version will also be included in the assets pack, uh, which you can get from our website. And if you don't know how to import it, then we have a bonus video showing just that. Awesome. Uh, anyway, let's get started. So as always, I've opened up Unity. And uh, you notice that our player is pretty far from the ground. And uh, if we just select him, we can see uh, over here in the right hand side in the inspector that our FPS walker enhanced is indeed uh, on the player. And uh, in here we have a lot of settings. Uh, the ones we're going to be focusing are under the falling damage. So here we have the falling damage threshold and that's what adjusts how high the player has to fall above the ground for it to register at all. But if we hit play now, we will notice that our player doesn't die, though inside of our console it will tell us how far we fell from in Unity units. So uh, we have to somehow apply this to our player stats, while also giving some control over how much falling damage he needs to receive. And also I would like to just make the symbol ability to enable and disable falling damage at all. Okay, great. So uh, let's first of all adjust the falling damage threshold uh, to something we like. Uh, I don't know if 10 is the uh, perfect amount. We'll, we'll quickly figure that out. So let's see here. There it registers. That's maybe... That was 13 units. And there it also registers... That might be a bit too high. No, actually, I like that a lot. But again, this is depending. Uh, this is completely dependent on the game you're making. So please test this out uh, and don't just go with the value I'll, I went with here. Uh, great. So we'll get him high up in the air here and then open up the FPS Walker enhanced script. Here we go. So there is quite a few things going on here, but most of this you can just ignore. Uh, We're going to scroll down just a bit to where it says if falling. And this is basically where we call the falling damage alert function. And I just quickly want to rename that because now it's no longer an alert. So we'll call this apply falling damage instead. So delete the alert part and add the apply. And then go all the way down to the button of the script and do the same. Apply falling damage. Now we can just go ahead and make the, uh, the script actually damage the player. That's the most crucial part. So under the function apply falling damage, we'll make a new line right before the debug deadlock. And here we're just going to send a message using game object that sent message to the player stat script to call the function apply damage because if we open up our player stats v2 we can see that we have a function here called apply damage which has an input which is the damage amount and that will just call the uh, that will just subtract the health and then check whether or not we're dead and so that's just all we need to do. So now we can just type game object with a small g that send message. 
open up parentheses, apply damage, and I've made it with a double M, and I know that's a typo, uh, but I just decided to stick with it because I made several of those. Uh, it's a bad habit of mine, but please uh, do change it in your script if you want to. So apply damage, and it's it's just here. Um, so apply damage, comma, and then we're going to type fall distance. Close it up, and then a semicolon. And now when we go back into Unity and hit play, we take a look at our health in the right hand corner, and indeed we lose health when falling. But we are falling from a really uh, high distance and not dying. And this is really unrealistic. And also we still don't have the ability to turn on and off fall damage at all. So let's go ahead and make those two adjustments. So slide all the way up to the top and let's make some new variables right above the falling damage threshold let's type var enable falling damage equals true so that's going to be true uh, or the uh, falling damage is going to be enabled by default let's also make another variable and i'm just going to make this right under called var falling damage multiplier and what this is going to do is it's going to determine how much we want to multiply the falling damage and then subtract from health so if this is equal to one we're just going to subtract the amount of uh, units we fill but if it's equal to two we're going to uh, we are going to subtract double it and if it's equal to 0 0.5, half, and so on. Okay, so now that we have made those two variables, let's go down to here where we are calling the function on the if falling. And remember, if you can't find something in the script, you can just go ahead and uh, press Control F or Command F, your, uh, Command F if you're on a Mac. And then you can just type in what you're looking for. So I'm looking for apply damage... Um, uh, apply falling damage and that will highlight it in the script and you can just press enter until you find whatever you want so that's just a handy thing to to always remember but inside of this if statement we are trying to figure uh, figure out if we fell and uh, we want to just add a parameter so we want to check for something more than just that and we do this by using these two add and signs so two of them will make it check for this and whatever we type now and that's going to be enable falling damage is equal to true so we both need to fall and we also have need uh, we also need to have falling damage up enabled now we can scroll down again to where it says game object that sent message apply damage falling dis uh, or fall distance and then we can type multiplied by and then the falling damage multiplier let's see if we get any errors it looks fine these can just be ignored and uh, now inside of the inspector panel we can see some new variables showing the enable falling damage, which we can take on and off, and the falling damage multiplier. So let's see if this is working. If it is, we should be dying now. And we did. And now we can hit respawn, and we are back in the game. So that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was just a rather short one, uh, but... Well, I'll just uh, quickly make a few changes and keep the camera running uh, because I think I shouldn't make anything um, while the camera is not. So uh, if you just want to see me uh, do some fire animation uh, or, or just animating the light here, just some, a few tweaks, uh, then just um, stay for a couple of minutes. But this is really the ending of the video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. 
Okay, to those of you who stayed, we'll just be animating the light here under the campfire because it's annoying uh, me a little bit that it's not flickering even though the fire is. So let's just move down our player again to get him back on solid ground. And now we can go to our campfire and we can see I dragged in the uh, default flame prefab here, which comes with the standard assets. And under that we have our loud light source 1. Now we can go ahead and bring up the Unity uh, animation. So window animation or control 6. Should bring it up here, just brought it up on my other screen. And we'll just go ahead and dock it down here. And now we can go ahead and uh, adjust the light properties for this game object. But we'll first hit the record, so hit that red button. And let's save this under animations. Call this slow light flicker, or light flicker slow actually, light flicker slow. Hit save. And we'll just remember to set this to loop. And now we can just go ahead and quickly make an animation for this. This could of course also be done through scripting. Uh, though I just wanted to show you a very basic animation and how you can set it to loop without that much work. So uh, at first I wanted to be glowing uh, it's at full amount. So I'll just quickly add a key or a curve. Actually, we'll go with curve. And uh, now you can go forward to, let's say, 1. Change it to 0 0.9 maybe a bit less. Oops, we're animating the enabled here. That's really not what I wanted. So we'll just delete that again. I wanted to animate the intensity. There we have it. So here at curve, go forward to about one, go down to like 0 0.7. And we can see it's just a very tiny amount so it creates a little bit of detail to a game. Now let's go to something like 140 and then change it to 0 0.8 again. Like that. We can zoom out a bit. We can maybe try playing this. And that just gives some very subtle uh, light flickering and we could of course expand on this to make some uh, fast changes too. So the intensity down to say 0 0.6 here. Don't know if that's too much. And then have it rise to 0 0.85. And then go forward some more and go back to 0 0.8. Eight, so it will loop correctly. And let's see if this is looking out great. The drop is a little big for me there at 0 0.6. So let's do 0 0.7 instead. Hit play. And I think that looks really great. So uh, that was basically it for the small animation there. Let's just have a quick look at it in game. And remember to check play automatically. So let's just maximize the screen. And that's really awesome. Just a little bit of light flickering. And this will probably be more visible once it gets nighttime. Yes, it is. And that looks really great. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was just to uh, quickly take our crosshair here and drag him under the player. So drag him under our player there. And that was basically it for that. Uh, let's also zero out the position variables here. There we go. Just so we have the crosshair oriented towards our player. And then I also want to... Let's see if there are any more changes. That actually looks pretty good. We could go ahead and disable the audio zone, but I think that's 
pretty moody. I'm uh, I'm speaking with an audio guy at the moment who might uh, be interested in making some cool music for the game. So that would be really, uh, really awesome, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you for sticking around and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.